Do you know how to analyze frames in buildings and bridges? In this tutorial, I will simplify complex structural analysis by breaking down the process step by step. Learn how to handle loads and solve for bending moments in beams and columns. Follow along as I explore moment distribution method for analyzing frames in four easy steps. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. I want you to remember uh, two things. First is initial solution and then we have complementary solution. What we did to solve moment distribution method is we clamped the joints. We said that Ki, kinematic indeterminacy is zero, means there is no degree of freedom, everything is fixed. And then applied load will cause fixed end moments. And then in complementary solution, it had four steps. So determine unbalanced moment at the locked joint, unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite. Thirdly, distribute along connecting spans according to distribution factor. And fourthly, carry the moment over. I want you to remember these things as well. The carryover factor is half uh, when the far end is fixed. Carryover factor is zero when far end is pinned. And also the stiffness is four EI over L and when far end is fixed. So three EI over L when far end is pinned. So fixed end moments are found out in spans BC and CD. So that's why joint B will have MFBC, joint C will have MFCB for this BC span and for CD span joint C will have MFCD and joint D will have MFDC. So this is what we have determined over here, which I explained earlier. Now we have to find out stiffness and distribution factor. Joint B, it has two members connected. So it will have a stiffness KBC. Now remember that far end is fixed at the moment. It will have MFBC, which will have WL square over eight, and it will have MFCB, which will have opposite sign. You can see a stiffness is four EI over L because far end was fixed and EI L for this member, AB is two and EI is same as EI. So that's the reason we have this same EI. So if you simplify it, you will get two EI. And then again, a stiffness BC when the far end is fixed. Now BC is here. Instead of EI, here it has two EI. It means that its size is double. So four EI over L means four times two EI divided by L, L is four. So that's the reason we have four times two EI over L, and this is giving us two EI. Whenever you have same stiffness, then distribution factor is going to be half and half. Distribution factor BA, it should be equal to K BA divided by all stiffnesses entering into that joint. So K BA plus K BC. So this is two EI, this is two EI, this is two EI. That's the reason it's giving me 0.5 and 5. Now next I will move to joint C where I have many members connected. For joint C, I have KCB, KCD and KCE. For KCB, the far end is fixed here. For KCE, far end is fixed. For KCD, you can see that far end is pinned over here. So for pinned, I have a different formula. I have three EI over L. So KCB is four EI over L. And then you get two EI. Similarly, you have four EI over L for CE and then you get value of EI. And then for CD, because the far end was pinned, so that's the reason we have three EI over L. Now this will give me these values. And then if you work out their distribution factors, so distribution factors for BC, CE and CD will be 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. How do you find distribution factors? It will be for BC, it will be this KBC 2EI divided by all addition of all these different, which will be 5EI. So 2 over 5 will give me 0.4. This will be 1 over 5, it's 0.2. And again, this is going to be 2 over 5. That's why it is 
0.4. So by all means, write these distribution factors directly. This is a frame. Previously, we talked about beams only. Well, we have joint A, joint B, C, D, and E in the frame. Between BC and CB, moment can be transferred to both sides. So BC and CB, these both joints, they can carry moment. BA and AB, it will be one way. So it will be from B to A, but because this is fixed, it can't be A to B. That's the reason from B to A, we have carryover factor half. From C to E, we will have a carryover factor as well, half, because this is a fixed joint. So that's the reason we are writing this half carryover factor over here at E. Because there are three members connected to joint C, so that's why we have written C, B, C, E, and C, D. Joint B, we have two members, B, A, and B, C. Joint A, we just have one member. Joint D, we have one member. Joint E, we just have one member. And then next step is to write the distribution factors. Now you can see that distribution factor for BA and BC is 0.5. So simply write 0.5 and 0.5. Distribution factor for BC, CE, and CD, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4. The next step will be to write the fixed end moments. And fixed end moments are for BC and CB, I have fixed end moment for CD and DC, I have fixed end moments. So I have written these fixed end moments here. At I'm starting from joint D because this is a pin joint. It cannot carry any moment. And our initial assumption was that we clamp all the joints. That was part of initial solution. And the complementary solution is that now I'm starting with joint B. So start with any of the joint. Whatever moment you have at a pin joint, at this pin joint, you have 7.5. A pin joint cannot carry a moment. So it has to be carried back to joint C. So that's the reason that we have carried this moment over here. Uh, there are four steps. First is determine unbalanced moment, which is minus 3.33. Unlock the joint. Initially, we assume that all joints are locked. Unlock the joint and apply equal and opposite. So equal and opposite of 13.33 is plus 13.33. Third step is distribute. Okay, plus 13.33 times 0.5 is 6.65 and again times 0.5 is 6.65 and then you can see carryover factor is half half of 6.65 is 3.32 and now you have carried it over across these spans once you have carried it over then you have to put a line now joint c because it is taking moment from b and it has taken moment from D as well because D is pinned, but just for once because the moment is going to be zero at D. It has to be zero. Now, what is unbalanced moment at joint C? Addition of all this, yes, it's giving me 5.412. Now, this moment is unbalanced moments. So remember that there are four steps unbalanced, apply equal and opposite, distribute, and carry over. Now 5.412 is to be distributed according to these distribution factors. Step two is apply equal and opposite, which is minus 5.412. Step three is distribution factor. Multiply minus 5.412 with 0.4, then you get 2.16. Multiplying it with 0.2, you get minus 1.07. And multiplying with multiplying with 0.4, you get 2.16. Can you go back to the di um, this, the scheme diagram, please? Why is there no moment transferred back from E to C as well? Because it's fixed end. E, e is a fixed joint. It can take resisting moment. Moment is moving from A to B, but not from E to C. Not from E to C, no. Fixed end support can yeah. always resist moment. We have to carry it over. So from CB, carryover factor is half. So half of 2.16 is minus 1.06. From CE, it can be carried over to EC. This is EC. Now you can see that from joint C, the moment should be carried to B. Okay, moment should be carried to EC. This side will be EC. There it has to be carried down here, but it can't be carried to D because it's a pin. So this is the reason from CB, it is carried over back to BC as half. From CE, it is carried to EC half, but from CD, it is not carried to DC because it's a pin. Uh, now you have next unbalanced moment over here at B minus 1.08. In the same way, you will apply these four steps 
and then in the same way you will distribute it if you like i mean you can probably stop here because these steps will not make much difference so once you add up all the moments then you should definitely get a zero moment at d because it's a pin now you're getting three different moments then you have to plot it first of all you have 3.65 that is the positive moment so positive moment is 3.65 it is plotted inside of the frame and then at this end now this is your this point is your a b point and then at b a you have 7.232 at b a you have 7.233 now you will ask that how do we plot inside and outside so if this is the left side and this is the, the right side the the sagging moments are plotted on here the hogging moments are plotted outside the so positive on the right side is going to create a hogging moment negative on the left side is going to create hogging moment but because we have the positive on the left side so that's why it is sagging moment because we have loading in this span bc the moment will go down it will have some value in sagging but certainly it will go down it will be curved because of uniformly distributed load and now once you reach at this point 14.662 which is cb now cb cb is the right side of this member bc positive moment at right side is going to create hogging moment so that's why you have it at the top again i have cd and uh, ce ce is negative but ce is the is the right side so this is where you're getting 1.13 at cd you have minus 13.52 and this is the left side so because this is left side negative on the left side is going to create hogging moment and as you have a point load as well so this point load would depress the bending moment diagram down and then finally i have 0.565 it is negative on the right side of the member so when it's negative this is left side of of the member it's from c to e this is left side of the member and this is right side of the member negative on the right side of the member is going to create a sagging moment so sagging moment is going to be plotted inside of the frame and if you like i mean you can give these values but these are actually not necessary so as long as you're showing the plot that is coming down that's absolutely fine could you please yes. explain again how you draw the diagram for vertical members of the frame so inside is positive i'm not using positive sign i'm saying uh, sagging so inside is sagging moments outside are hogging moments so this is my joint a this is b this is c and this is e and this is d uh, for a b and c e for a b you can see that i have positive moment and you remember that so negative moment on the left side is generating hogging moment and positive moment on the right side is generating hogging moment hogging means tension will be at the top and compression will be at the bottom because i have positive here positive value is going to generate a sagging moment so that's why it's drawn inside the frame positive moment on the right of the frame is going to generate a hogging moment so that's why it is outside now on the other hand this member ce because it's starting from c to e its left side is point c i have at ce i have minus 1.13 so minus 1.13 on the left is going to create a negative moment a negative moment at right is going to create a sagging moment so that's why it is drawn to the inside of the frame i still don't get it was negative um not 0.565 and it's drawn um inside the frame have a look here so when you are applying a negative moment on left it will generate hogging moment this is hogging moment if you are applying a positive moment here it's going to generate a hogging moment negative on the left hogging positive on the right hogging yes yes this is clear and if i'm applying this is say a column c if i'm applying a negative moment here at the top this is going to bend like this negative 1.13 and if i'm applying negative moment okay negative is counterclockwise so if i'm applying counterclockwise here at this end it's going to do it like this so this is going out and this is going in so that is the reason i have 1.13 on the outside and 5.65 inside does it make sense can we discuss that about a b span as well a b column yeah yeah definitely so for a b we have positive at a positive moment means i will apply moment like this so when i will apply moment like this positive it will go towards my right okay at this point i have so positive again if i apply positive moment you can see that it is going towards left Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. 
click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.